thing up. Oh, there, there, there it is. is. Okay. Well, I'm not okay. going to I think we're on. Are you on? Yeah, it's, 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 it's your live feeds on right now. Yeah, it is time. I'm not going to delete anything. It says live, so it must be. No. Yes, 32 seconds. Okay, very good. Thank you. All right. God bless you and thank you for being here at First Lutheran Church in Altoona. I'm Pastor Fulmer and uh, we have a visiting musician for our second Sunday in a row and that's uh, Dr. Wicks. He's back there. Beautiful head there. Oh, my space. Thank you. It's so good to have you. And thank all of you for being here as well. And then we have people who see us on Facebook and YouTube. Welcome to you as well. You know, because I've said it many times, we have safe air in here. It's good to breathe and safe Remy Halo air filtration system, which works in conjunction with our air conditioning. Can you feel the AC in here this morning? It's better than out there. I don't know that. Okay. Well, we do pause to listen to our prelude and open our hearts and our minds to God's presence.
please join with me as we turn to our opening hymn, Great is Thy Faithfulness, 771 in our blue hymnal, 771.
Almighty and merciful God, we implore you to hear the prayers of your people. Be our strong defense against all harm and danger, that we may live and grow in faith and hope through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen.
Our second reading this morning is from the book of Corinthians, chapter 8. Now as you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in utmost eagerness, and in your love for you, so we want you to excel also in this generous undertaking. I do not say this as a command, but I am testing the genuineness of your love against the earnestness of others. For you know the generous act of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, so that by his poverty you might become rich. And in this matter I am giving my advice. It is appropriate for you who began last year not only to do something, but even to desire to do something. Now finish it, so that your eagerness may be matched by completing it according to your means. For if there is ignorance in there, the gift is acceptable according to what one has, not according to what one does not have. I do not mean that there should be relief for others, and pressure on you, but it is a question of fair balance between your present abundance and their need, so that their abundance may be for your need, and in order that there may be a fair balance, as it is written, the one who had much did not have too much, and the one who had little did not have too little. The word of the Lord. She had endured much under many physicians and had spent all that she had, and she was no better, but rather grew worse. She had heard about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. For he, she said, if I but touch his clothes, I will be made well. Immediately her hemorrhage stopped, and she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. Immediately aware that power had gone forth from him, Jesus turned about in the crowd and said, uh, who touched my clothes? And his disciples said to him, you see the crowd pressing in on you. How can you say, who touched me? He looked all around to see who had done it. But the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. While he was still speaking, some people came from the leader's house to say, Your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? But overhearing what they said, Jesus said to the leader of the synagogue, Do not fear, only believe. He allowed no one to follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. 
When they came to the house of the leader of the synagogue, he saw a commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. When he had entered, he said to them, Why do you make a commotion and weep? The child is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him. Then he put them all outside and took the child's father and mother and those who were with him and went in where the child was. He took her by the hand and said to her, Talabacha kom, which means, little girl, get up. And immediately the girl got up and began to walk about. She was 12 years old. At this, they were overcome with amazement. He strictly ordered them that no one should know this, and he told them to give her something to eat. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Christ. place that is pleasant and very nice. Last evening we were here and there were a number of people, 20 or so, and it was so hot outside, 90 degrees, and it was refreshing to come in here. And it's getting hot out there, so I'm glad I'm standing in AC and I'm glad you're in AC. And so we can listen and listen to the gospel for a long time. Yeah. No one really wants to do that? No, I guess not. I have a watch. I won't look at it. Don't worry. We have a wonderful gospel here. We have two beautiful expressions of Jesus' love for people. It's about healing. It's about Jesus' power to heal and save us, to save us from disease. The woman was receiving healing through Jesus just touching his robe. And maybe you've heard some sermons about that. These have been used over and over again, if you have faith, just to touch Jesus' robe. Do you have faith to reach out to Jesus? That's really what's there. That's the question. Do you have faith to reach out to Jesus? And of course, this woman believed that Jesus was a healer, he had heard that, and so she came to the healer who would heal her of her woes. And that's exactly what transpired. And Jesus says, your faith, your faith in me has made you whole. And so we have faith and moving to Jesus that are combined a necessary factor for our lives as Christians. We live in this world and there are many things that are happening, but we go in this world not alone, but we are in the world, but because we believe in Jesus, we're not alone in the world. We know about the tragic situation in Florida. Oh my goodness, so, so sad. There are many, many sad things that happen all around our world and to people we know, and sadness is a part of life. But we who believe in Jesus continue in the midst of our lives, like that woman, continuing on with her hemorrhage, and then finds finally relief in the Savior of us all. Wonderful. Reach out to Jesus, in faith. That second aspect of Jesus' healing is so very instructive to us because it's sensing in us, sensing that we need to hear this word about Jesus' <coughs> ultimate ability to heal. The ultimate ability to heal is from death. You know that. 
Jesus promises us life in him always, in this world and in the next. People gathered there at that dear girl's bedside had reported out, she's dead. So that's the end of it, right? If she's dead, no need of Jesus. No need to bother him anymore. Just let him go on his way. But Jesus has other thoughts and other ideas, of course, about he himself being the author of life. He is God. He is there, in person, the God of the universe. And so he comes to this little girl lying there and says, get up. At his word, she is able to get up. She has been healed from what? It would be good to name it, death. He healed her from death. And that same God of the universe, Jesus Christ, who suffered on the cross, who was raised again on the third day, has this word for us. Life in my name. Life in my name. Do you believe that? So that's what the story is asking of us. Do you believe that? That Jesus can raise someone from the dead? That example is yes. There was another strong example with Lazarus who was in the grave, in the tomb, and he was dead. Cold stone dead. They rolled away his stone. And in a loud voice he says, Lazarus, come out. I love it. Isn't that what he'll say to us? Come out to life. Come out and live. Not in the shadow of darkness of death, but rather live in the light. That's a fantastic remembrance for us. And today's gospel is always wanting to teach us something very important. And it's teaching us, you can reach out to Jesus. Do that. When there's fear, anxiety, the kinds of things that happen in our life, even the tragedy in Florida, reach out to him and ask for help. Or, if you are a person that is just terribly ill in this life and think, there is no hope for me, you can expect Jesus to come and help you in some specific way to actually raise you up. That's what he did with that little girl. Raised her up into life. There is a beautiful hymn in our blue hymnal that I'm going to refer to in this conclusion, and that's in our blue hymnal, and I'd like you to open it up, and I'd like you to turn to hymn number 779, and you know this hymn well. We've sung it many times. It's sung at funerals, but we're not at a funeral. We're at a time of life, and in this refrain, this wonderful refrain, we hear these words, and I will raise you up on eagle's wings. Beautiful. I will give you the strength that you need to bear you on the breath of dawn, to make you shine like the sun, and hold you in the palm of my hand. That is the promise of Jesus for us living and dead. But we're living, and so we want to hear this specifically and take it to heart. And I will raise you up on eagle swings, bear you on the breath of dawn, make you to shine like the sun, and hold you in the palm of my hand. Amen.
Friends, we stand together for confession of our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God. turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that, attentive to your word, we may confess our sins, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Gracious God, have mercy on us, and in your compassion forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. Uphold us by your Spirit, so that we may live and serve you in the goodness of life, to the honor and glory of your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God has mercy on you, forgives you all your sins. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthens you in all goodness by the power of the holy spirit keeps you in eternal life Amen. Amen. let us come before the triune god father son and holy spirit in prayer trusting in that god hears us God of hope, the ministry of your church extends across borders, from nearby neighbors to far and distant countries. Accompany all those who labor eagerly in service of the gospel, that through your good news, all might experience transformation. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Almighty God, we give you thanks for the air we breathe, the water we drink, the land that provides our food. Guard all species of plants and animals from harsh changes in climate and empower us to protect all you have made. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Righteous God, we pray for nations and their leaders. Give them a spirit of compassion and steer them towards a fair distribution of resources that none among us would ask too much or too little. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of healing, your touch has the power to make us whole. We pray for those suffering with physical or mental illness. Embrace those who are sick, especially those on our prayer and concern list. Surround them with your unwavering presence. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for this assembly and all those gathered together in worship. Revive our spirits, renew our relationships, and rekindle our faith that we might experience resurrection in this community. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Father, compassion and healing at the time of death. Help everyone involved in the situation of the collapsed building in Florida. The gift of life is precious. Pause with me and offer your own prayers. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Father of love and healing, renew our faith in times of trouble. Help us believe that faith flourishes as we are in the world, yet not in the of the world. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We give thanks for the faithful ancestors in every age whose lives have pointed us 
towards you. Envelop them in your love, that which Cyril, Bishop of Alexandria, and all your saints, we may be united with one another the last days. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We lift our prayers to you, O God, trusting in your abiding grace. Amen. Amen. And now may the peace of our risen Lord and Savior Jesus Christ be with all of you. And also with you. And we have a special way of sharing. saying, 
Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Join our prayers with those of your servants at every time and every place, and unite them with the ceaseless petitions of our great high priest until he comes as victorious Lord of all.
Thanks be to God.